Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, March 17th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan today took a look at good old desktop.ini. These files in Windows are typically used to assign icons to different files in a directory. But what Jan found out is that, well, uh, they can actually be also used to rename files within Windows Explorer. So using a specifically crafted desktop.ini, essentially just uh, easy to rename files, replace the file names that are being displayed in Windows Explorer. And with that, of course, tricking users into clicking on the wrong file or executing malicious code. Now you may ask, why not just rename the file or the folder? Well, the advantage of doing it via desktop.ini is that whenever you rename a folder, well, there's an event trigger that could possibly be detected. But uh, if you do it via changing or creating a desktop.ini file, well, uh, then you technically don't rename the directory or the file. And such, there is no event that is uh, being created that could be used to detect this activity. And if you are relying on VMware, VMware Workstation, VMware Fusion to isolate malicious code from your host, well, make sure you update. Uh, VMware did patch a use after free vulnerability in VMNet DHCP that could be used to execute arbitrary code on the host. This vulnerability was assigned a CVSS version 3 score of 9.3. There are a couple of other approach escalation vulnerabilities that are being addressed here that do have CVSS scores in the 7.3 to 7.8 range. And researchers from Malware Hunter team and Sentinel Labs came across uh, interesting malware that again uses the COVID-19 theme as a ruse to get people to open the malicious file. The malicious file is actually a straight executable that masquerades as a Word document. So no Word macros involved here. The executable will then open Word actually and load a legit looking information document about the COVID-19 virus. And then it will go ahead and launch additional code to download malware and act as a command and control channel. What makes this sort of interesting is that it does use Cloudflare workers as a command control channel. Cloudflare, of course, uh, usually is being used as a proxy and as a web application firewall, but it also has a feature called Cloudflare workers. Cloudflare workers uh, can be used to do simple search and rep- place operations on content. And this is apparently being used here as part of the command control channel to then communicate with infected systems. And what's not really clear is why they're using Cloudflare workers instead of just uh, using sort of the proxy capability. Of course, just using Cloudflare makes blocking the requests and actually recognizing the requests a lot more difficult because there's a lot of legitimate traffic going to Cloudflare and you can't easily block a specific Cloudflare IP addresses without really, you know, blocking a lot of valid sites as well. Plus, of course, the IP addresses are going to change. That's sort of part of the nature of Cloudflare. Well, and if you haven't updated to TCP dump version 493 yet, you may want to do so because a proof of concept was released for a vulnerability that was patched in 493. It's a heap based buffer over read and not clear yet how it could potentially be exploited besides just crashing TCP dump. So uh, could possibly lead to some form of remote code execution, but the proof of concept released is just crashing uh, TCP dump. 
And Slack fixed an interesting vulnerability discovered by researcher Evan Custodio and reported via Hacker One. This vulnerability, an HTTP request smuggling vulnerability, could have been used to essentially force a redirect on users. And as part of that, it would leak their account token, which of course can then be used to impersonate the user. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and also watch out for our special talks that we have this week as part of our Cybercast. Usually when we do have live conferences, we do have evening uh, talks. And now since we are doing them virtual now uh, since, until the end of May, we decided to also broadcast uh, free of charge all of the evening talks. So follow the SANS Twitter feeds and such and see what talks are available. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.